I, I just wanted the pain to stop. I genuinely thought that the world would be better off without me. Hi everyone, this has taken me so long to do. I've been meaning to start a YouTube channel for literally years um, and so many of you have been requesting it. So. Here it is. Um, and I decided for my very first video to give kind of a full overview of my story. Um, you know, the things that I went through, the, the things that I guess kind of developed me into the person that I am today and why I advocate for mental health in the way that I do. So I'm going to get straight into it, uh, mainly because I don't want to have to edit down a really long video. Um, so I was born in a very small town in the South Island in New Zealand. Um, and when I was three years old, uh, something happened and it was the very first time that uh, I felt shame. It was the first time that I felt pain and uh, it was the very first time that I was sexually abused. You know, I didn't know as a three-year-old what was going on, but uh, the implications that that would have on me later in life were significant. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on at school as I got older and I remember being about seven years old and and this girl uh, out on the playground, I was going across the monkey bars and and this group of people started laughing. And this girl piped up and she said, Jazz, no one's going to touch those now because no one wants to catch your disease. And me sitting here now as a 25-year-old, that may not mean anything, but to a seven-year-old, that was everything. To a seven-year-old, that kind of these, built these beliefs in me that uh, I didn't belong, that I was a burden, that I was unlovable. And, and as life kind of continued... Uh, and home life wasn't great, school life wasn't great. When I was 12 years old, I made a decision that no 12 year old should ever make. Uh, and I made the decision to try and end my own life. And as a 12 year old, I don't think I knew that if I did this, that I, I would never wake up again. But to be honest, I don't think that I cared. I, I just wanted the pain to stop. I genuinely thought that the world would be better off without me. And, you know, thankfully, uh, that, that day didn't claim my life and I continued to battle. Uh, and when I was 16 years old, there was still a whole lot of stuff going on at school and at home. And I kind of made this decision where I was like, if I'm gonna you know, do anything with my life, I need to get out of here. So I was working at a fish and chip shop at the time as well as going to school and I saved up uh, and I moved up to Auckland, which is a big city here in New Zealand by myself. Uh, within the first year of moving up here when I was 16, I lived in 11 different houses. Uh, I ended up trying to take my life over the course of quite a few years, uh, 14 times. And I was in and out of psychiatric units. I was homeless. I was put in women's refuges. Um, I had to get taken out of school and put into a different school. And I kind of really made a massive mess of my life. Um, I couldn't tell you how many times police were chasing me down the street or turning up to my house or um, how many times I had to go to the hospital and, and it was pretty it was a pretty horrific time of my life and I remember thinking because of everything that was going on because of the way that I was responding I felt like I was completely alone that the world would be better off without me and I wholeheartedly believed that and so I tried to take my life many times and you know I was in a coma at one stage and in and out of the psychiatric units and I'll do a whole other video on my experience in the psychiatric unit and what that was like because I know that a lot of people uh, who haven't been in there are curious about it so I will do a video on that um, but while I was sitting in the unit after my final suicide attempt uh, these two people came in their names are Wayne and Libby Wayne and Libby are uh, parents of my friend Grace and they had known me um, for quite a few years and they basically sat down and I was in the intensive care unit at this point and you know that's bad when you're in the intensive care unit of a psych ward. Um, so I'm sitting in there and I'm like messy bun, which I have now, uh, and I was in, you know, track pants. I don't think I'd washed my hair in like a couple of weeks and I was on all these different kinds of medication and they sat down um, and I was in the ICU because I was on flight risk as well. So. I had already tried to hurt myself in the ward before and was trying to run away and escape, um, which is another story for another day. But they came in and I remember them sitting down and I was too ashamed to look at them. I was so scared of what they would say, of what they would think. Um, and I remember eventually making eye contact with them and just bursting into tears. I 
was so, so upset that I had gone in this circle again, that I was in the hospital again, that, you know, this, this hadn't stopped. Uh, and I remember Wayne looking at me and he said, Jazz, I think that one day your story is going to change the world. And I remember looking at him and going, I'm in the intensive care unit of a psych ward. That's not going to happen. To give you context at that time in my life, I had lost my job because of my mental illness, so I was jobless. Because of that, I couldn't afford, afford rent, so I was homeless. Uh, and I had kind of walked away from everyone in my life who cares. So when Wayne said to me, Jazz, one day your story might change the world, you can see why I was like, that's impossible. That's never going to happen. Uh, but then a couple of weeks after that, I had a conversation that really changed everything. Uh, and it's the conversation that my whole book, which is behind me here, Stop Surviving, Start Fighting is uh, based on. And it was a conversation with a woman, her name is Esther. Uh, I have known her for many years. And it was after my final attempt. And she basically sat, sat me down and I was bawling my eyes out. And she looked at me and just went, Jazz, why are you crying? And I turned to her and I was like, I'm just so tired of fighting. And she looked at me and went, Jazz, what do you think the definition of fighting is? Because I don't think that you're fighting. I think you're only surviving. And it's only when you learn how to fight, that's when the change that you're longing to see is going to happen. And I was like, not going to lie, a little bit offended. Because I was like, I've been fighting this whole time. But when I looked at the definitions of surviving and fighting, this is what I found. The definition of surviving was to continue to live or exist in hardship, manage to keep going in difficult circumstances. Now, having a survival instinct is important. It's what keeps us going when times are tough. But the definition of fighting is to engage in a battle or war, fight to overcome and destroy an adversity. Now, I don't know about you, but that definition is very different to the definition of surviving. And, um, you know, over the course of the next few months, I, I really learned what it was to fight. And I'll do a whole video on that concept of surviving and fighting. And, and this book, it's, it's all in here. Um, and it really changed my life. Um, and it was after that, after I learned how to fight, that I decided that I wanted to start to fight for other people. Uh, we, I co-founded the organization Voices of Hope and went into film directing. Um, to try and, you know, figure out how I could tell stories that mattered, how I could tell stories that could create impact and make change. And um, that's kind of how the whole advocacy journey started. And that's where I was able to sign my first TV deal with Jessica's Tree, the movie deal, the book deal, book deal number two, um, which is coming out next year, very early next year, which is exciting. But it's also where uh, I was able to take my experiences and, and use them both on an individual basis where I have literally talked people off bridges um, when they were about to take their own life, as well as talking to world leaders at the UN General Assembly. Um, so it's been one heck of a journey and I'm excited to continue to share it with you to be able to uh, go into a lot more depth about the stories of my life and the things that happen in my experiences and my advice and my wisdom on, you know, whatever a 25 year old wisdom can have. Um, but I'm really excited. If you guys have any video ideas and things that you want me to talk about, please leave a comment below. Um, this is, you know, my first of many, many videos, um, hopefully. I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to upload them. I'm not going to do some kind of schedule because I know myself and I know that I'm not going to be able to stick to it because uh, I'm really chaotic. But I'm excited to be able to share more with you um, than just, you know, if you come over from TikTok, the little TikTok videos, it can only be a minute uh, or Instagram posts. This is a platform where I can go more in detail about all of the things that you guys are wanting to hear about. Things like, you know, uh, what happened with Dr. Steph getting me admitted to the psych ward or police officer Constable Campbell, psych wards, everything that you want to know. Um, so check comment down below and I will talk to you very, very soon.